So in previous class, we have studied type of operating system in which we have studied single user, single task, single user, multiple task, multi-user system, network operating system, distributed operating system, right? So now today's topic is dual mode of operating system and the system calls. So let's study what is dual mode operation of your operating system. Why do we need dual mode operating operation of operating system? Uh, in uh, services, we have studied that operating system provides the security to the computer system. How it is going to provide the security to the hardware? Let's see. It provides a dual mode of operation. It allows operating system to protect itself and the other system components. How this dual mode operation is make, to make this happen, to protect itself and the operating system? For this, it provided a two mode, like user mode and kernel mode. What is the meaning of user mode and kernel mode? Just have an analogy of your faculty of engineering where uh, we have a coordinator, sir. You can think of as a dean of faculty of engineering. He is sitting in his office and he is doing all the essential things to run this faculty. Means he is a kernel of a faculty of engineering, just like a kernel of an operating system, which is responsible to provide the environment to run all the application programs smoothly. Similarly, coordinator of faculty of engineering is the kernel of faculty of engineering, and he is providing all the essential amenities to make the teaching and students, teachers and students provide comfortable environment so that they can uh, have a good interaction in the classrooms. So think of a situation where there are some students which are having some problem in their classroom or they are having some problem like a fan is not working, like drinking water is not there. For each and everything, every student is uh, rushing towards the coordinator's office for each and everything and suppose that coordinator sir is busy in doing some very essential tasks but he has to listen to all your questions and queries and all your problems but what about if those all problems can be solved by someone else like his uh, subordinates like his office superintendent his assistants then he is free to do more essential things like what are the more essential things like your examination related things your fees related things right but uh, what are your privileged things like if you are having some issue with some result, then uh, any clerk or office of return is not able to solve those issues or you are having some uh, issues related to your fees structure or anything else, and then you need to have a verification from the coordinator sir only. Understand? So these are the essential things for which you have to go to the coordinator only. He has to sign on your documents. He has to verify your credentials. Only then you can submit those documents to the university. So what I am saying that those things which are essential that can be done by the kernel mode only, but that those things which are not essential can be done in user mode only. By which, so if we are by forgetting those things in a two things like user mode and kernel mode, we are what we are doing. We are restricting the number of students approaching to the coordinator's office. So here in operating system, what we are doing, we are having a number of application programs which are running in a computer system. Now, if each and every program is for each and every activity needs a kernel authority to use the hardware, then it is very cumbersome for the kernel to make a protect itself and the hardware. But for essential things, if it is required like input output things it can be provided by the kernel mode only and all other things can be done in the user mode so let's see how it distinguish between user mode and kernel mode it provides a mode bit which by the hardware if a mode bit is one then we can think that we are in a user mode if mode bit is zero then we are in kernel mode so here it is written user mode if mode bit is one more you can think of a mode bit just like a flag okay what is a, what, how we use a flag in our computer programs? Like suppose you have done a previous semester or previous year, a program of odd and even number. 
right so you have used a flag there if a number is odd you put a flag as one otherwise the flag is zero in the end you check if the flag is one given number is this otherwise given number is even so let's see how this transition works in from user mode to kernel mode we have a user process you can think of a user process as an application program this user process once when executing in a user mode doing all those things but whenever it required uh, interaction with the hardware suppose it wants to store uh, its ms word file into the any hard disk it needs a uh, interaction with the hardware so there is a system call you have seen this word system call in the uh, operating system services also we will discuss after this transition diagram what are the system calls how it make things happen or how it makes the operating system make the hardware to work as per the requirement of the application program or user process so once a user process is executing it call a calls a system call and here you can see that user mode bit is one now when a trap is come that a system call is required mode bit is set to zero and you are in the kernel mode now now in kernel mode what we are doing we are doing all the essential things required to execute this system call suppose they, it needs an interaction with the hardware it is doing so or it is anything it required by that user process that need essential privileges that can be done in the kernel mode only once all these things are happen like executed system call each and everything is done and you are, and see that kernel mode bit is zero now when all things are done in the kernel mode then a result is sent back to the user mode return bit is again set to one and you are again in the user mode so all things that you can discuss with your friends have an analogy of your classmate where students can interact with each other they can pass their notes for with for passing your notes in a classroom you don't need the interaction of a coordinator sir you can done in the user mode only you can interact with one student to another student only that can be done in user process for this you don't need the services of a coordinator sir right but if you need a uh, some certification like you are the bona fide students of faculty of engineering university of lucknow you need the service of kernel only you have to put all your credentials to the uh, kernel's office uh, that is coordinator sir office he verify all your credential and put a signature and a seal so, and that then only you can submit that you are the bona fide students of faculty of engineering right so what i am saying here only privileges services are provided in the kernel mode and all other services which are not privileges can be done in the user process only and by the analogy what you are understanding that what are the privileges services services that can be done in done by the core only kernel only that is like your examination related issues your uh, these related issues these are privileges issues and what are the other issues like you are and fan is not working electricity is not there or water is not there these things can be solved by the office superintendent only for which you don't need the services of kernel okay so let's move on next is system call you have seen the system call in the services of operating system we have seen system call again when we study dual mode operation that system call is very essential it provides a mean to interact of application program to the operating system kernel so let's see how system calls works what are the characteristics of system calls and what are the application of system call how system calls works so what is system call system call provide a means for a user or application program to call upon the services of the operating system system call provide a means for user or application program to call upon the services of the operating system so what do you understand by this line that if you are if you want to use the services of an operating system you need a mean you need a medium which can trigger operating system services and what is that mean this is the system calls system call works as an interface between application program and the operating system services it provides the means to the application program or you can say in a broad sense a user computer user to interact with the operating system operating system having a multiple services and if what are type of service you required can be triggered by the system call only so let's see how it is going to work 
जनरली रिटर्न इन सी और सी प्लस प्लस जनरली दी सिस्टम कॉल्स आर रिटर्न इन सी और सी प्लस प्लस ऑल दो सम आर रिटर्न इन असेंबली फॉर ऑप्टिमल परफॉर्मेंस वाई मोस्ट ऑफ दी सर्विस सिस्टम कॉल्स आर रिटर्न इन सी सी प्लस प्लस because this is the language which is understand by the humans easily and it is most close to the hardware as you can see that when you, when you see the hierarchy of uh, programming languages you have seen is firstly there is a machine language this is the language of machines that is a binary language 0 and 1 right um, i have a question here why we call this uh, binary what do you understand by binary by means what so two pair two oh, binary two. means two so what is the characteristics of binary like we have zero and one only right in binary language <coughs> uh, this oh. is that is why it is called binary yes. or there is some one some other reason Uh, in binary language we are having zero and one only right yes yes sir ah uh, so that is why it is called binary or there is some other reason yes yes anyone so there is only two possible results true and false uh, yeah you can have an analogy by this true and false but uh, i am asking the question is that in binary we are having a zero and one that is why it is called binary language suppose if we have a ternary language then number of ingredients of that language ternary language we have binary language right what about ternary three sir three yes, absolutely three. right three good so what i am telling here that what most machine language is zero and one that is you have to deal with zero and one suppose you are writing a program in zero and zero and zero one and uh, suppose there is some issue that one zero is replaced by one and how you can debug those errors so it is very cumbersome for you to debug a machine language program and you need a lot of expertise to write the programs in machine language so any program written in machine language is very fast is having a optimal performance but that machine language cannot be easily understand by the human beings so what we have in next step we are having then assembly language assembly language is a language of symbols right we use add we use sum we use mul multiply for multiply somya sardar has written something uh, somya uh i don't have your name in my role list you are you using your different some different name other than your registration so me sardar singh is not in my role list now any other student can verify that so me sardar singh is a student of our class yes, yes sir. sir yes sir yes sir okay so me kumar singh he is so me kumar singh okay then cool so what i am telling that in if you want the optimal performance you have to write the code in machine language but we are not understandable to write the machine language so what comes next it is the assembly language the assembly language is uh, again very close to hardware but it is using symbols like add sum and it is having a, a again very cumbersome experience for the normal user so what we drive next thing is high level language what are the high level language example are c and c++ now this c language we must have read some programs in previous year and some one some students also understand about c++ we have some uh, normal english language used in this like printf like scanf so this is c language and c++ language is much understandable by humans and now we and you can see the hierarchy and closeness from the hardware firstly we have machine language then we have assembly language then we have c language now this is the language which is understandable by human beings and it is uh, close to the hardware but when you are talking about java when you are talking about python these languages are very far from the hardware they have some mechanism to drive your abstract programming into some um, 
assembly language, then that assembly language converted into machine language. So when, when you are away from C or C++ language, you are away from the hardware. And when you are away from the hardware, it takes a much time to execute your program. So we are not having optimal performance. As you are aware that most of the operating system are written in C and C++ only for the optimal performance. When where you have some um, performance issues, we write programs in C and C++ only for the optimal performance. So what we have seen here for system calls, you need a quick response from the operating system, right? For you need an optimal performance. So we write programs in C and C++ only. And for some programs, you can write in assembly language also for more performance. So let's see how, what are the system calls and how many system calls are triggered when you perform a particular task. Suppose we are having a source file and we are having a destination file. Now, what are the sequences of system call? Uh, do you understand the working of system call? System call is providing an interface between the application program or the computer user to the operating system and to invoke the services of operating system. So what are the services invoked by the system call? L let's see. Here is a source file, you acquire input file name, right? Then you write prompt to screen, accept input, then another system call, acquire output file name, write prompt to screen, accept input. These all are services you required with the help of system call. Now you open the input file, if file does not exist, abort. Create output file, if file exists, abort loop you what we do in loop read from input file <clears throat> and write to the output file what we are doing here we are having a source file that is a file a <clears throat> and we want to write the content of file a into the content of file b that is your destination file for which <clears throat> we are having these sequences of system calls and, and till what time we write the file a to file b until read fails that is <clears throat> everything is written into the file b <clears throat> now, excuse me. <clears throat> now we close the output file, write completion message to screen and terminate normally. As you can see, a lot of system calls are called during this transition from one source file to another source file. Okay. Now, let's have a real world example where you have seen a C program written and how our system call is call. Suppose we are having a C program invoking print of library call, which calls write system call. Okay, let's see. Here is an structure of a general C program. We are having a header file, stdio.h. What is the full form of stdio.h? Please write in the chat box. Standard input output. Standard, output. Standard input output. Standard input output. Good, good. Uh, please Standard write in the chat output. box also. Uh, so that I can see your name. Uh, standard input output header file. Uh, Shiresh Mishra has raised his hand. Uh, do you want to say something? Standard input output. Good. Nilesh Soumya, Chitransh, Bilal. Good. Okay, then stop. Ramadhan, standard input output. Right. So we are having some uh, activities here. Dotted is written. Now we are. Cool, Veda Shriyas. Now we, uh, you can start understand what I am telling you right now. So we are having a standard input output header files. We are having main and uh, printf function is there. We have written greetings, then written zero. Now whenever you call a printf, there is a library call which ultimately called the write function of the operating system. Now printf is called, here is a standard C library, your standard input output H file. Till now you are in the user mode. And once you entered into the standard C library, it will find out this write function there in the C library file. And then your command go to the write function. Once you are enter into the write function, you are into the kernel mode. And now that whatever the code is written to write the content into the output screen, this system call is doing those things. Once output is written onto the out output screen, here your again user bit is set to zero and you are returned to the user mode. 
and each and other things written into the other programs, those things are done by the user mode only. So this is an example. And let's have some other type of system calls. Uh, I'm giving these type of system calls just for your reference. Uh, it is not very important as per your examination perspective, but as a student of VCA, you must aware what are the system calls and what are the system calls are uh, in variation in the Windows and Unix environment. Just have a read. You don't need to look into each and every system calls and how it works. It is just for your general knowledge at what are the type of system calls so that you can aware that whenever you are doing something uh, in your computer system, you, you must have a um, like imagination that uh, there is a system call is going and now my program is running into the kernel mode and now I am this program has been executed in the kernel mode, now we are in the user mode. So when what we are having, for which we are having system calls, suppose for process control, what are the essential system calls required, like create process for Windows, exit process, wait for single object, and their comparison to for Unix, we are having fork, we are having exit, and wait. For file manipulation, for Windows, we are having create file, read file, write file, close handle. And for Unix, we are having open, read, write, close. And uh, these kinds of uh, question can be asked in the in your Viva also, that uh, examiner may ask you that, tell me one example of system call in process control. Tell me one example of system call in file manipulation. Suppose you are saying that for file manipulation, we have a system call create file. Then he may ask you that, tell me, uh, it's corresponding uh, system call in the Unix environment, then you can say, sir, it is open. So this shows that you are much aware about the environment of an operating system, and you are having some extra knowledge other than the normal syllabus of your VCA syllabus, okay? And next one is device manipulation. For this, we are having set control mode, read console, write console, and for this, we are having in Unix, IO con input output control, that is IO, CTL, read and write. And for information maintenance, get current process ID, set timer, sleep, get PID, alarm, and sleep. For communication, we are having create pipe, create file mapping, map view of file, pipe, blah, blah, production, set file security, initialization security. These are the things. So now you can see that we are having a lot of operations like process control, file manipulation, device manipulation, information maintenance, communication, and production. All these uh, are the services of the operating system, and by which means you are uh, invoking the services of this operating system with the help of system calls. And for each system calls, a separate code is written by the programmer, how to handle the process control, how to handle the man file manipulation, how to use the services of hardware with the help of device manipulation, how the use of information maintenance, how to use communication and the production. So we are done in today's class that we have studies today. What are, we have studied like dual mode of operating system and the type of system calls. I am again revising today's class so that you can better understand Let's start with the beginning. First one is dual mode operation of operating system. What are the dual mode? We are having dual mode for user mode and kernel mode. And why we are having dual mode? For the production of the operating system and the computer system at large. And how we are protecting our operating system kernel by providing only essential activities to the kernel and rest of the things in the user mode only. And we are having, for which we are having a flag that is called a mode bit. If mode bit is one, it is user mode. If mode bit is zero, it is kernel mode. And again, it depends upon the implementation of a separate, different, different operating system. Suppose one operating system is having mode bit zero for the user mode and one for the kernel mode. It is convenience for the programmer only. Normal layman user don't understand uh, or don't bother about what is the mode bit of one or zero, whatever. Now, this diagram is very important. And I recommend to all my students to in examination, please draw the diagrams. Please tell your story with the help of diagrams uh, whenever it is possible because diagrams are the mass booster. So always go for a diagram and have a whole page diagram whenever 
you are right, designing uh, you are writing your program each and every answer in your question answer booklet now how you transition from user to kernel mode we are having user process or application program when it is executing in user mode we don't need a kernel uh, facility when but if you want to do some privilege work we call a system call it trap and put the mode bit of 1 into 0 it execute in the kernel mode execute all those things which is required by the uh, that application program in a privilege mode then when everything is done it put the return bit as one and it return the system call to the user mode now what are the system calls system calls provides the means a user or application program to call upon the services of the operating system it, as you can see for better performance we can write in assembly language but assembly language is not also well understood by the human being so we write a human understandable language that is c and c++ which is close to the hardware and most of the operating system kernel is written in c and c++ only here is an example of system call when we are writing a content of a source file a into the content of source file b now what are the examples like acquire input file name write from to screen accept input acquire output file name write from to screen accept input accept input open the input file if file does not exist abort create output file if file exist then abort loop we are we have to write from in loop because we write read one character at a time and write into the output screen like read from input file write to output file until reads fail means every character is written into the output file now close the output file write completion message to screen and terminate normally and here is an example of system call we are having a simple c program and you can see in a simple c program uh, uh, prakar dikshit do you want to say something you have raised your hand do you want to say something please write in the chat box if you have any query okay so in a c program simply whenever you are calling a print up function it goes to the standard c library and find the corresponding system call of that print up that is a write function into the standard library files and till now you are in the user mode and once you uh, triggered that write function of your or kernel mode then you are in the kernel mode right do all those things which is required or program into the write function everything is done then mode trap is again there you put the mode bit as one and you again uh, control is set to the user mode now what are the different type of system calls we having a uh, multiple system calls for process control file manipulation device manipulation information maintenance communication and production here are some exercises for you differentiate between user mode and kernel mode means you have to read the book and find the differences like what are the uh, activities can be done in the user mode and what are the activities can only done in the kernel mode as i have given you the analogy of like for result and fees issue you need a kernel mode and for all other things you need a user mode right so how dual mode operation allow operating system to protect itself and other system components you have to let us understand how this dual mode operation can protect you right as you can see that in as per the analogy that for each and everything if every student is uh, coming into the coordinator's office and you know that every student is having a different temper um, mental level one if suppose one student is very hyper and uh, have some firearms with him or her it can threat with the coordinator so there is a issue with the this kind of impression so how dual mode operation allow operating system to protect itself and other systems uh, you have to write your reasoning if it is good if you read the books to get some more examples now third question is give the significance of mode bit in dual mode operation of operating system you have to explain the significance or importance of mode bit in the dual mode operation of operating system now question number 4 is what is the purpose of system calls why do we need system calls question number 5 is how is system call handled by the system 
when how system call is doing things for application programs to interact with the hardware the using the services of operating system so till now what we have studied we have studied what is an operating system right we have studied that it is a resource allocator it is a control program right then what we study we study the type of operating system then we study about the dual mode operation of operating system and the uh, system call so these are the things we have studied till now uh, in next class we will study something more and i am again telling you that this book we are, i i am following and it is very good that this is a galvin and gagan opening system concept you can find it in the google also asutosh is asking a question sir do we have to write these exercises um, no veda it is for you if you write these things it will be beneficial for you because when you, you are writing something it uh, triggers your neurons uh sir we don't have this yeah i will provide today's class pdf in google classroom okay but i will i will upload this today's pdf lecture note into the google classroom i have uploaded only two pdfs till now first one is the introduction of operating system and second one is the type of operating system today's class lecture notes will be uploaded today only into the google classroom and uh, these exercises for you better uh, if you are having some target that if you want to make your personal notes it will be beneficial for you only otherwise don't need to write anything i never recommend to do um, Uh, like uh, mugging things if you understand those things you can write because uh, right when you are making your notes it is a uh, your revision tool because you are having classes from last week and we can have classes for 2 to 3 months right and when you are in the final semester examination sitting and suppose you are not revising this duration 3 to 4 months then you are having very problem to recall those things so for which these things are your revision tool your class notebook your lecture notes your like e content these kinds of things are only revision tool everything you have studied till in my class you are very much aware understand things but as you know we are capacitors what are the cap uh, characteristics of a capacitor you must have read in the digital electronics can anyone tell me characteristics of a capacitor do you have you uh, discharge yeah can you explain a little bit more you can unmute yourself asutosh you can unmute yourself and explain the characteristics of a capacitor come on asutosh we are having only 3 minutes left asutosh are you there asutosh anyone else anyone else please unmute yourself i has two players i am just asking about characteristics beta so me i am just asking about characteristics not it's a hardware thing i need just characteristics of a capacitor come on come on anyone else yes we have read yes. capacitor uh, stores uh, some energy and discharge it continuously uh, when you it discharge once power is gone understand once power is yes. gone uh, what is the difference between static ram and dynamic ram so me has written it has uh, ram uh, discharge while uh, s ram dis doesn't discharge uh, right so what is your uh, uh, in normal ram what you are using static ram or dynamic ram your normal ram is what is static ram or dynamic ram i uh, you generally you dynamic refresh refresh thing na you click on the right on the mouse and put the refresh thing why you are doing these things yes, what is the reasoning behind this refresh abhishek very good dynamic ram what is the reasoning behind refreshing your computer screen with you, with the help of mouse you are doing refresh thing na aditya good do you understand why do we refresh okay so today's homework is you have to find why we refresh our computer screen in uh, next class let's see how many students find this answer okay understand my question what is the purpose of refreshing the computer screen 
okay okay to reconnect i think to, re- to reconnect all the uh, or means reconnect the browser or reconnect the no 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 wrong answer wrong so answer. to empty the dram very good what is the meaning of to empty the dram what do you understand by this please uh, read some more you will get some more knowledge about this i am just uh, putting a like a keeda in your mind so that you have some interest to find the study very useful for you okay so this is just a trigger for you to do some study okay so find this why we are doing refreshing if you learn things i will be very happy if you find something more okay thank you class